yeah there's quite a lot of potential um, we finally have that silver so we can now start building our population we have that tile as well so that's good um, that will take eight turns to go for population point we're going to switch uh, ooh, what we're we going to switch we're going to temper until the furs get improved we'll switch to the three food tile um, now what do I want to do I'm going to quickly upgrade this one I don't want to use this as a tile because it's on tundra but getting a second um, silver woman I can trade it away for money or another resource to increase my happiness either or either way it's in, an intelligent thing to do um, that's not a city quest either but I might take that out for the gold Antwerp wants truffles so that's worth noting because I want I would quite like to befriend Antwerp because the extra happiness will be very handy and I can access truffles they're down here it's just I have no idea what the um, barbarian situation is going to be like around here uh, so I'm going to take this out I might as well I'm in the terrain that will give me a bonus I can do the 75 gold that's quite a lot at this stage considering I'm earning three a turn currently it'll be more than that now because I'm going to switch back to those furs I think Manila wants the Colossus I physically can't build the Colossus because you need to be on the coast and then what I'm going to do now is try and improve this iron so that if I get attacked I can actually build swordmen that would be very handy also that's a very good tile to work I'm going to heal a bit there just in case um, there's a hidden barbarian that will take my scalp in, if I take that out even though it's on literally like 1 HP so if someone else goes and snipes my kill I won't be very happy <laughs> Adrianople or Adrianople is now population 2 I don't want everything to grow far too quickly but at the same time that would take me 71 turns that's just too long so I'm going to do that it means my shrine will take longer to build but I need the population up so it becomes a useful city if your population is too low you can't work enough tiles to become a useful city at the same time you don't want your population too high because you either don't have enough for them to do of any use and your unhappiness situation can spiral out of control that is why I was careful I may be getting flanked and getting 10% against me but I would rather take that out so it can't produce any more and it was a good job I did because Genghis Khan was probably going to steal that off me I will quickly heal in place though because I'm very safe there I finally built a shrine I could now go for a library but it's going to take ages and I mean ages and unfortunately granary doesn't improve sheep I believe that is a stable that does that um, I'm going to start trying to go for it I'll show why later but I may do that because I'm still growing but my hammers are now much higher so it'll take half the time to build that so I think that's the best thing to do the um, benefit of the Pantheon isn't with Adrianople at the moment because it needs three followers and it currently only has one whereas Adrianople, um, Constantinople rather has three so that's why it gets an, an extra production point finally those two have made peace with one another I don't actually think they did anything except I think the US has a third city so they're already trying to spam cities at so the Rakamang has really drawn a deuce with his um, pick because he's surrounded by two people that love to spam cities Sweden doesn't tend to spam cities he just tends to um, be really really irritating <laughs> on a di diplomatic level and as for this side Genghis Khan is a warlord Isabella varies I find a lot from game to game although if anyone's going to try and win culturally after a couple of massive cultural nutters she's the one to do so uh, Denmark as well they are pretty erratic as you already seen I mean I think he's already hostile towards me basically if some someone is hostile in the AI terms trading with them becomes incredibly difficult 
It's ironic because trading with them is what sometimes makes them less grouchy and hostile. They sometimes just go to guarded. Guarded is not ideal either, but it's better than hostile. You need calendar to get cotton. I don't have that available yet. Um, so what I'm going to do is improve the third silver around me. So I can sell it off. Who's got any money? Only Hiawatha and Isabella have any amount of money. But Hiawatha does have salt. So I'm going to switch him silver for salt. So that, that's a good deal for me. And for him. So now I really don't have to worry about happiness um, being a problem right now. I can just boost it. I'm hoping Isabella will get some cash by the time I get the third silver. Because... At this point in time, she has no access to it. She might eventually access it here or here. So, if I'm going to trade silver with Isabella, I need to do it early. Likewise, um, Gustavus Adolphus has the potential to um, get uh, silver reasonably early on. So, there we are. I'm going to start producing that there. And now, I'm going to go for calendar. Uh, just so I can quickly get the uh, cotton if I decide that's the right thing to do. Basically him being mean to me and I say very well just so I don't try and entice a war. I don't want to be attacked. Not at this stage anyway. He may attack um, Sweden but I suspect he wouldn't because I'm closer to him. I am as close to the middle of the map as you can get really. Which is weird because I've got Tundra above me. It's a very weird Pangea. Normally you end up with a couple of people in the middle of a Pangea map. And they don't even see the Tundra. Um, I have connected iron so Warsaw is friendly with me for a bit. And that means I've got more culture. I had no idea they wanted me to connect iron. That is a beautiful tile now actually. Um, I'm going to switch that to this for the gold purposes. I think that's of benefit right now. Um, it does give me a food less though. So I might temporarily not do that. I might just temporarily leave this here. Until I grow a population point And then I'll put one on the furs to get extra gold. I think that might be the best thing to do. This guy though still needs moving. I'm going to make him go to the truffles. Because um, Antwerp requested that I have truffles connected. So I will try and do that. And hopefully by the time the truffles are connected I should have calendar so I can connect the other resource up while I'm there. Because I've got, I've got one, two, three, four ready tiles. I don't want to go to war with Howl Bluetooth Isabella, I insist. Feel free to yourself, but I don't want to. really do not want to get involved in such an argument this early on. Later on, all will be much different. We'll happily take a lot of these people on. But right now, I don't want to do that. I don't predetermine, by the way, how I intend to win. It always depends on the situation. Unfortunately, truffles, when you work them, only give you another gold. They're kind of like fur in that regard. Uh, Rakameng doesn't like Hiawatha, which is interesting, because it wasn't him that declared war on him. I would have thought he would have asked if he wanted to uh, if I wanted to declare on Washington. Never mind, Constantinople's now population five. And it's telling me to automatically work that tile. I don't want to, I need some gold. Also having another hammer is very useful. You see he's asking for gold because we're now friendly. He's, he is quite needy. But it's not a whole lot of money, one, two, six gold, so I'm gonna say okay. Later on in the game, they'll ask you for like three or four thousand. It's just like, dude, seriously. And if you say no, they look at you like you've got three heads. Is it? Can, it can get really ridiculous. But um, so far so good, really. Got one guy hostile with us, so I can't really trade with him. But apart from that, we're not doing too badly at all. I may. I'm trying to decide where I want to look for scouting purposes next. I might go and have a look at the US and what they're doing, so I will go this way, um, I'll leave it to there. 
So I've got two archers, I can nearly build a third. If I have three archers in one city, I don't think that any empire will be able to break me down right now. I've now got calendar, so that's good. And now what I'm going to do is um, go to philosophy, and then I will go to guilds, not guilds, to currency. I don't want to go quite to guilds yet. The reason I'm going for philosophy is because the National College is a really good building if you can get hold of it. You have to have a library in every city that you have before a city can build the um, National College, but it is a very good a good building to have. It makes your science production a lot higher. And unless you're Babylon or um, Korea, you really don't have a way of having early science boosts. So the Great Library and the National College are the only way you can do so. So prioritizing them is quite important. I actually kind of wish that I was one of those two because I really enjoy using them. Apparently there's a uh, city-state quest there I may, as a way of getting experience, go over here. And I've just remembered something. Because I have construction, I can upgrade these units. They're now composite bowmen. And their ranged attack is four higher, I believe, than a normal archer, so it's quite a big boost. And they've got an extra two strength, so they can take physical uh, melee attacks a bit better. They still lose to warriors one on one, in isolation. Uh, but they won't get absolutely annihilated by every unit that they come across that's melee. Because trying to use archers early game is a nightmare, because literally anything will just plough them down. But that will make my defence much better, and I've just got the Temple of Artemis, so that is so brilliant. Uh, the Temple of Artemis gives quite big um, growth to your population, and producing ranged units is a lot faster. So that is a very, very useful um, thing to have gotten. I'm going to now switch this from um, there to there. I've just got to decide which tile I want to improve next. Because I could build a road between the two cities, but until this starts earning some gold, the benefit of doing that isn't very high. So I might just um, build this pasture to make that cow actually produce some production, as well as um, simply just a lot of food. And what do we want to build in Constantinople now that we have the Temple of Artemis? Um, It's tempting to go for the water mill, but they, the water mill has two maintenance turn. It's basically a granary with an extra production point in return for an extra gold maintenance point. So it's not brilliant. I might. I'm tempted to go for Stonehenge because, on a map like this, if I can get the first religion, it would be crucial. But I don't think I'll be able to. Ha I won't. Be, uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't think that's going to be possible. But I'm going to have a bash at it. Again, if I fail, I get fail gold, so it's not a disaster either way. Oh no, I'm no longer friends with the city-state I didn't even realise I'd become friends with. Oh dear. Uh, the problem with using archers for this job is that there's a potential for these units around me to snipe the um, kill off me. So I've got to be a little careful. Uh, there's no barbs there anymore. I'm going to move that here to try and stop people from um, sniping the uh, kill off me. Like for example I think their archer will attack on this turn. So if I kill it then they'll just collect the prize so I'm not going to do that. I need to know what's going on here though because the US... Knowing him it won't just be three cities, it'll be more than that. Yeah, as you see, that archer took it out, so now I'm going to steal his kill, effectively. So now Antwerp is a temporary ally again, because it's on the threshold for ally. I'd love to know what's going on here. I just wish, oh how I wish, Washington didn't have access to iron. That has made everything a lot more difficult. because without iron having a lot of cities is fine because you can just smash them out if you needed to and at the rate he's building he's coming perilously close to me so that might have to be an option 
Uh, not right now, but as a lot, you know, more long-term solution. That only earned me four experience because Genghis Khan decided to get in on the act. Never mind. This is still going reasonably swiftly though, especially now because I've got truffles and now I will become an ally of Antwerp for a while. And I'm friends with Mombasa as well. And because I was allies with um, Antwerp, they connected me porcelain, which in turn makes Cahokia friends with me. So my happiness is 25 temporarily. That is huge. And you'll see why having a massive happiness stack can become very helpful. Um, quite a while from now, but in due course. Um, I'm going to build a plantation to get that going as well. So far, so good, really. The only problem is that the tiles around me are a bit poor in places, and that, that's about it. Um, do I still want to keep working those tiles? Yeah, I do. Even if there's less gold available for doing so. If push comes to shove, I could always move this tile to there to earn an extra four coal in a turn, but I don't feel the need to, so I'm not going to. If you enjoyed the video you've just seen, please join my Facebook group and follow me on Twitter for the latest news.